in there of what we're supposed to be. And that's enough difficulties. Just kind of hang on in there with me a few minutes. Man, the woman of God, it's a blessing to be with you guys on the air this morning. As always, I pray all is well. I pray that there's no discrepancy, no issues, uh, as I say all the time, no infirmities that God can't take care of in your life as we continue to pray. And that's just what we're going to do this morning. You know, just kind of shut down the enemy in every direction. So we have that great day that he promised us, according to the word of God, one of those abundant days, the knowing, declaring, the creed in the midst of what we are. The plan of God is always more than what we can see. Just want to get this um, particular got an air message that's coming on one of my systems here. But let's go ahead and move. We're going to move uh, kind of swiftly. We're going to move a little abruptly over the book of Psalms 36. And yeah, we're going to look at this very closely in Psalms 36. It talks about men's wickedness and God's perfection, you know, which deals with a lot of us in our lives. We have wickedness. We all have wickedness. But through the model prayer, you know, even times, you know, sometimes when we, we do things, it's not as pleasing to the eyesight to God. It's amazing how he, he keeps us in his will. He's never going to let you be condemned by anyone or anything because that wasn't the one created you. And they don't want, that's not the ones going to test your heart. God tests your heart. So when it seems like you're not being a pleasing to people in the way they think you should be, hey, look, and God's going to always love you. Remember we talked about in the book of Ephesians, when God created you, he loved you out of his good will. You know, he predestined, he designed you, he engineered you. And he only alone has got the last say-so in and over your life. So in this morning, we're going to continue to pray as we read over this Psalms 36, just a, a kind of a short version. I just talk about a few things, just deal with the process of um, the oracles of a man's heart, man and woman's heart. It says over in Psalms 36, and look at that first verse, and it says, In the oracles with my heart concerning transgressions of the wickedness. Let's look at this real closely. In an oracle within my heart concerning the transgressions of the wicked. Now, wisdom of this particular psalm refers to the relation in the nature of sin, which we all have. We go back to the book of Ephesians. It tells us past times walked according to the course of the world. Romans chapter three. We all did some things that might quite wasn't right in the eyesight of God. So he just kind of labeled all of us for all has fallen short uh, of the glory of God. Any man without sin cast a stone. But at the same time, he's so loving and kindness with it. He gives us an opportunity to come to him one on one. Despite how heinous. How corrupt, how bad, how maliced our sins may be. God is just there, there, open with, you know, sit there, sit there uh, with open arms. As it says in Psalm 46, and I'm a very present help. I remember right now, God, to bring you in for whatever it may be that's going on in your life that you don't quite understand. Just a little folding of uh, your hands and bending of the knees, you know, can make a lot of things all right. He goes on down in this particular scripture in this particular second verse. He's, he that flattereth himself in his own eyes. When he finds out his iniquities and when he hates. In other words, he flatters himself. Look here. In his own eyes. In other words, he's a person not really discerning what he are. You remember the scriptures talk about, you know, first let a man examine himself. That's what it says in Corinthians. Thorough examination of love yourself. Sometimes you walk around, things smell bad, and you may find out the cheese is in your pocket. You got to be examinated. Everybody else is wrong, but you're always right. Sometimes you got to know how to get along with your brother and sister to the point that you got to carry that still tongue, and you got to be able to let loose and chill and let God bless you. You know, the Bible says, who has an ear, let him hear. You know what the Spirit has to say. A lot of times the Holy Spirit speaks to you when you're in your most quiet position. Listen to what he says in verse 2 once again. For he flatters himself, himself or herself, in his own eyes, conceited. When he finds out his iniquities and when he hates, the words of the mouth are wickedness and deceit. Constantly speaking things that's not in the eyesight of God. Doesn't necessarily have to mean 
you got to use the spicy language, but just things come out of your mouth that can hurt, kick, scratch, and just, you know, devour people spiritually. You know, people say sticks and stones don't hurt my bones, but words cut, words cut when you speak bad about an individual and you be content to mark about an individual knowing you're supposed to be a person who walks right toward God, but yet you still continue to do. And the God said, you know the sin. You know, you know not the sin, but you're sin anyway. You walk over the top of it, but then you use my grace as a forgiveness trait to say that you weak. Well, God said, you got to humble yourself. You had not come fully to the direction of the Holy Spirit, which is love. You know, we talk about the five gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit, excuse me. And the number one gift is love. I think Galatians talks about that also. Uh, I think Galatians 5, 14, once you make that announcement, as being a man and woman of God, according to the word of, uh, the word of Romans, wrote Romans 10, 8, 9, confessing the word, believing in your heart. The Bible said you automatically come to Galatians 5 and 14, the part of the kingdom, love. But if you insist on doing things opposite or diametrically opposing the commands of God, by an archaean and going your own way and hoping that you can yet still sin willfully and ask grace to save you. you. You you can't do that. Sin is there when you're trying. When you're trying, you don't have enough to go forth to what you got. Then God puts that kind of octane in your tank, your tank to push you farther and make you better than what you are and what you you know what the enemy tries to make you to be. Because his job is always to you know, contempt you and you know, make you feel that you know God's not working in you. He says over in this particular. Let's look at this third verse again. He said the words of his mouth. Are wicked could be anyone's mouth doesn't necessarily mean my mouth your mouth the pastor's mouth the teacher's mouth it doesn't necessarily mean evil words things that people say the way they say it snappy you know arrogant you know where they carry themselves unapproachable that's the way they can turn a lot of people off but you got to be careful when you're in the presence of people that you don't be that type of individual, snobbish. The Bible says he, he causes the wise, <laughs> he causes the wise to do good. Look what he says. He divides wickedness on his bed. Now let's take a look at that, that divides wickedness on his bed. Say the terms of the oracles by uh, the prophet in the Old Testament means that divine utterance in Mike in the book of Micah four and six, it goes to some of the some of it in the book of uh, Hebrews, but the words say that the Lord is um, the Lord is um, a Psalms God. It's the Psalms of David, and that He's the prophet, and He said He receives the prophetic revelation and He sprinkles the word among His sons and the prophets. Now, when He sprinkles words among His prophets, not evil that He speaks. You know, because God speaks about it, what is it, Numbers twenty three nineteen to 21? That he's not a God that he go, he, 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 he's not a God that he should lie. And he's not a son of a man that he should repent. Well, he goes back and talks about in Isaiah 55 and 11, you know, that every word that proceeds, of course, out of his mouth, being the God who he is, you know, it won't, it won't go void. He goes farther on back up to Isaiah 55, 8, 9, and 10, said his, his ways and our ways they don't even come close, so we can't measure ourselves to God, but we have the capabilities of being just like God. Through the power and the Holy Spirit, He's given us. The only thing we can do is being born of an uncorruptible seed. In other words, Mary didn't receive her seed by corruption. God wasn't entering into Mary by corruption. It was incorruptible. I mean, it wasn't through the hands of men that Jesus saw his life come to fruition on earth. That he may show each and every one how we have the right to the tree of life. Let's look at this particular fifth, this um, this particular uh, fourth word. He deceives wickedness in his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. Notice, notice what he does. When you deceive wickedness in your bed, you wake up thinking about something negative, and you're supposed to be waking up thinking about how good the Lord. You think about what. So and so owes you. Uh, you thinking about how much how much work you got to do today? You're not giving God the glory, giving God the thanks. 
You're waking up with a different kind of mindset other than what you should be waking up to. The kind of mindset you should be waking up to is, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity of raising me up off this bed as I come out of this sleep and slumber, this comatose that I'm in, that you laid me to rise up and see this day which I've never seen before. The Bible says, oh, no, there in the second half of that particular area of the sixth verse, notice, I mean, the fourth verse, we said, he sets himself in a way that is not good. See, your mindsets has a lot to do with you when you rise up in the morning. The word of God says in the later part of the fourth, he sets himself in a way that's not good. He does not abhor evil. Now, y'all understand what he's saying? He sets his mind in a way, does not abhor evil. You know, even though you set your mind in a certain way and you don't have evil intentions, sometimes your ways without knowing what you do, without asking God to change, you can cause you to fall into that calamity, even though you don't think about it. If you know you had previous sins that you used to have done, and you hadn't done them in a while, and you want to thank God for that, if that thing of used to be with you would have been anger, would have been whatever you deal with, um, whatever, you know, this could be anything. It's a million things that we all deal with in life. Nobody's perfect. But whatever it is, you got to work out your own. There's too much that each one of us have in our own lives that we got to try to work out our own soul and salvation before we really look and sweep around somebody else's back door. So that's a lot of things I can wake up every morning. Lord, help me in um, my uh, my way of attitude. Help me in my way of conversating. Uh, help me in my way of studying. Help me to be more of a greater husband. Let me be more of a greater father. Uh, Lord, help me to be able to be more concerned about you in terms of your ideals and what you want me to do. Lord, help me to walk upright. You know, Lord, help me. You know, I need help every day because the world is wicked. The world is wicked. And they have study coming at them in such ways that they don't even understand and know. So the wickedness of men is always there. In women, it's always there. Don't forget, don't get it trapped. Don't get it twisted. You know, they're just as wicked as men. And you got to find out when you come across people that are nice and they are understanding for their positions the way they are. Then God begins to show you the honor and grace and how he can straighten out anybody, no matter who they are. So I'm Apostle Charles. I was here at Tenet Soul Studios. Father God, we thank you for the man and woman of God. We ask you to look over them this morning. We pray the power of prayer, of revelation, illumination, inside sights. Father God, give them witty ideas of all the things you declare for them in their life. Give them a fantastic day. All those who receive it, birthdays on the day, Lord, bless them abundantly. Give them the grace and mercy. And everything that is designed to come from you, Father God, and you only alone, Father God. Get them a glide in their stride, Father God. Get them a bounce in their step. Let them know, Father God, life is, is great. It's fantastic for them. Even in the midst of trials, Father God, you yet woke them up to see a day which they'd never seen before. Father God, look over my family, all the families, all my sisters and brothers, all the sisters and brothers, over my wife, all the wives, over my daughters, all the daughters. Lord, keep your loving arms around them, Father God, all the grandkids, all the nieces, all the nephews from every family, Father God, all across the world, Father God, just touch families in general. And let us believe and declare it even as they go out to the public places. Lord, look over the publicans, the one who run these public facilities, Lord, change any hearts, Father God. Let them speak words of truth to the hearts of the people. They may be transferred and changed. They may clearly understand and realize, hallelujah, that they are by you, Father God, and you only. And Father God, we thank you for this time, this moment, this morning, as we rise up before you with a hot cup of coffee in front of us, Father God, feeling good about what you're about to do for us on today. We don't know, Father God, that yet today still has to go forth, but Father God, it's a blessed day. Bless us. Let us see things. Let us witness things we never witnessed before. Let it be a dawn of a new day. Each time we open our eyes, get ready to go forth on today in which you may in fact go. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Lord. Amen.